Hello, everyone. Well, it's that time of year when our thoughts turn to love, romance, and how on earth can roses cost that much? This is why every February 14th, my husband and I give each other a high five. Oh, hey, it's Valentine's Day. It's so much cheaper. It's art for romantics this week, but not these romantics, or these romantics, or even these romantics. No, real romance is something quite special. Human and divine all at once, it cannot be confined by capitalism. Kind of like art. By the way, my name is Nancy Langham Hooper. I'm a PhD, art historian, and cultural enthusiast, ready to use the great art of the world to help you out. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel, like it, ding the bell, do all the things, and Facebook will notify you every time I post a new video, which is every Friday. I don't expect you to put it in your diary. Okay, so what makes someone's story romantic? Well, love, obviously, but love flourishes even under the most boring of circumstances. To be really romantic, a couple needs obstacles. Just ask any good romance writer. Which is a genre you should totally be reading, by the way? Seriously, nobody rolls their eyes at people who like true crime or sci-fi. But romance is silly? Maybe because it's a genre written and read mostly by women. And women can't be serious, can we? By the way, check out A Defense of Romance and a list of recommendations from my good friend Kate in the description box below. And by the way, Jane Austen was romance. Deal with it. Okay, sorry about that. Back to obstacles. Obstacles make or break a love affair. They can be personal, from religious differences to differing priorities. They can be familial, Romeo and Juliet, anyone? They can be geographical, when the lovers are from different countries or even different continents. Or they can even be societal. Back in the day, our man of the moment, St. Valentine himself, performed illegal marriage ceremonies for Christians who were being oppressed by the Roman Empire. But we see societal obstacles even in modern times. White people don't marry black people, rich people don't marry poor people, men don't marry men, and women don't marry women. Love is plenty on its own. Love triumphant? Now that's a good story. It's also a great work of art. This beautiful bronze cast is called Memorial to a Marriage by the American artist Patricia Cronin. It shows the artist and her wife, fellow artist Deborah Cass, intimately embracing in their bed. One figure lies on her back, one knee bent, and one arm around the other figure who lays on her side, embracing her lover. The second figure's top leg is bent, as we so often do in sleep, and her bottom leg is straight, mirroring her partner. The two figures' toes gently touch at the foot of the bed. Both figures are naked, except for a sheet over their bottom halves, which crumples up and around their legs. Both women have their eyes closed, as if dozing. They are not asleep, as the smallest suggestion of smiles can be seen on both their faces, and they ooze the contentment of waking up in the arms of your lover. There are all different types of ways to sculpt the human body, and this one is called neoclassical. Neoclassical sculpture, which was the dominant type in the 18th and 19th centuries, drew inspiration from classical Greek and Roman statues discovered around that time, thus the term neoclassical. Neoclassical sculpture is calm, graceful, and idealized. There are no pores or wrinkles on these faces. Their skin is as polished as the stone or metal it is made of and Cronin's modern sculpture mirrors that classical grace. The figure's entwinement in the bed looks like a kind of gentle dance, with no effort, beautifully relaxed. The bed sheet also becomes a neoclassical accessory. The drapery folds and undulates like the clothing of goddesses found in the forums of Rome. One difference, besides the subject matter, is the reality of nudity. In classical and neoclassical statuary, you'll never see a pubic hair. And here, Cronin has deliberately let some peek out from under the sheet. A reminder that these women are real, human. And that realness, that individuality, was really important to Cronin. When Memorial to a Marriage was first installed, she noted that there are no real monuments of real women in all of New York City. And yet, as full of life as the figures are, 
The title points to death, memorial to a marriage. Cronin originally did this work, a marble version, in 2002. In that year, the only legal recognition of homosexual relationships in the United States was in death. So the marriage, which didn't legally exist, would only come into being after it had ceased. This paradox is at the heart of this work's power. And that's why, though this is very much a contemporary work of art, Cronin has used an old form, funerary monuments. From medieval times, tombs of important people often depicted statues, called effigies, of them on top, as if lying on a bed. This included couples. The poses started out pretty pious, the hands in prayer, that kind of thing, but soon the tenderness between the people was represented. Hands were held, emotion was expressed, in a medieval way, of course. But this is the ancestor of Memorial to a Marriage. What is very different about Cronin's sculpture and the effigies she is referencing is quite important. She's not dead. Neither is her wife. Look, there's proof. It's almost like a little bit of time play, Cronin told a reporter for Hyperallergic. I'm alive, and I made a memorial to something that didn't exist. This sculpture was originally done for a plot Cronin purchased at Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx, New York. The original marble didn't do so well in the weather, so in 2012, Cronin cast it in bronze. This cemetery is full of funerary monuments popular in the 19th century, most of them dedicated to celebrated writers, artists, and important cultural figures of the city. Woodlawn was partly fashioned after the famous Père Lachaise Cemetery in Paris, where many graves are works of art, a testimonial and memorial to the creative within. Next to Cronin's dozing couple in the Bronx are other famous Americans, like Duke Ellington and Nellie Bly. If you ever have a chance to visit this kind of cemetery, I highly recommend it. In fact, people used to hang out in cemeteries all the time before public parks were a thing, and the art there just enhanced their experience. So, is this story romantic? Love? Tick. Obstacles? Tick. Happy ending? Heck yeah! In July 2011, as soon as they could possibly legally do it, Cronin and Carr got married. Here's their announcement photo from the New York Times. And is the art romantic too? Well, gentle viewer, that just depends on your reaction. I'll say for myself that I find it very romantic indeed. The tenderness and intimacy rendered in bronze seem as real to me as if the subjects were breathing. And long after they're gone, when they are actually in the ground beneath this metal slab, this will be a monument to their relationship. Not marriage in general, but a marriage. Theirs. Two real women of New York City whose love was ordinary and extraordinary. Just like all love is. Well, I hope that's helped you to get a little romance in your life. What? Huh? You have no romance in your life? Single people. Meet me at camera two. Hey, this whole day can seem designed to make you feel crappy. And I'm really sorry about that. But... As some very wise protesters have recently said, love is love is love. Celebrate the love you have in your life. Even if it's not romantic, don't downplay the love that passes through your hands. It's all wonderful. It's all magical. And most importantly, my dear viewers, remember the wise words of Oscar Wilde. To love oneself is the beginning of a lifelong romance. Okay, you got this. I'll see you next time.